Hi there, welcome to this video. I'm Wo, a mixing mastering engineer. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how to mix a house track from start to finish. Usually I go over this information in one-on-one -on -one lessons, but due to the situation and keeping a distance with the COVID, I wanted to share these insights with everyone to help you out. Hopefully you will find this info useful. If you have a question, leave them down below in the comments or send me a DM on Instagram at music. Let's go straight into the project. You just heard the track we are going to mix today. The first thing is to organize the project. When starting a project, I first go to the folder and go over the files the client sent me. Then I drag them all into FL Studio into the arrangement window, like here. And then I go one by one, organize them, name them, see which elements are in the track so I know what I'm working with and I know I can initially hear what I like and what I don't like. And then when I place them in our studio, I go into the stem itself, double click, and I link them to the mixer. In the top right of the new window is uh, a number or probably like this, like three dots. And then uh, when you double click, you can drag, double click and hold, then you can drag it to the number you want. For me, it's the kick because in this template, the kick is on number 18. And when you go back, you see number 18. I do this for every element and um, I organize it from left to right, vocals first, then all the drum elements from kick to percussion, and then the instruments, lastly, the FX. This is also reflected within the arrangement window. First you have vocals, it's muted at the moment, here it says vocal, then drums, then instruments, and then the FX. While doing this, you will also notice perhaps some empty stems or some stems with problems, like a stem could be really quiet and that you doubt if the client actually wants the stem to be in there. At this stage, you can best ask questions to your client before you start mixing and accidentally mix something that wasn't intended to be there. Just make sure everything is correct before you actually start mixing. When you've dragged every element into your arrangement window, it can look a bit like this. Way too many stems, difficult to find anything, so I group them. Right click on a track and group with the buff track. The hotkey is G for it. And then you can just collapse everything and you have a nice clear view. If you need the drums, you go to the drums like this and have everything clear. This helps speed up your workflow. If you double click on the lower end of a box, you can collapse it. If you click once, you can decollapse it. Helps for organizing even further. After I've organized the project, I press play, let it play all the way through to listen. When listening through for the first time, your ears are the freshest. You hear everything new. So it's really important to take notes, even write out what you hear and what you want to improve upon and what you think will be good for the end result. This phase you can be really quick and dirty in the adjustments you want to make to fine tune them later on. The next phase is gain staging. This is arguably the most important phase because EQ won't fix a bad balance. Balance is everything in every mix. And it's also very difficult to achieve a good balance. The track at hand is a house, techno, electronic dance track. Thus, we know that the kick is the most important element and the kick should be the loudest. That gives you a nice starting point. This is my kick. In the mixer, my kick is here. And that's the loudest, absolute loudest element in my entire track. I want people to hear the kick at all times. It shouldn't be muffled by any other elements. We now have a starting point to go on. How loud should everything else be? Quite simply, lower in volume than the kick. Or apparently lower in volume. That's perceived loudness, also important. But the kick is the main element. You need to hear it at all times. My main starting point is the drums. As you can see here in the arrangement window, the drums are up top. And I just start with getting the groove right. Especially in a house track, Let's let's solo the, the, the drums for now and let's listen.
there are a few important things I noticed here. First, the kick needs to be pumping, like I said. And then second, we need to keep the drums interesting. If your client has done a great job in, uh, in balancing already or has a great groove and vibe going on, then it's not as prevalent, but in this case the drums were a bit dry and I needed to find a balance in which small elements were brought up a bit more and the, the, the main elements, like the open head, were brought a bit down because the groove became stale after a few bars and that's not what you want in a track like this. For example, you can see a huge waveform here, that's the shaker. The shaker was really low in volume, that's why I normalized it and brought the volume way back down because it was way too loud, but that, that's how soft it was. But it did, it did bring really the groove, it, it glued the drums together. And you might not even notice the shaker that much, but let's solo it. You can really feel it driving the, the, the beat. Focus in on the shaker, you can really hear what it does. And these are like small hidden elements that need to be brought up a bit to really make the idea of the producer shine. Though it can be difficult to find the right balance for every element at first instance. If you have an element you, you like and you want to push it but it's still too loud or too soft, one tip I can give you. Let's take the shaker for example. What we can do is bring it all the way down, the fader all the way down, press play and easy, gently bring up the volume fader until it's too loud. This is too loud and I'm bring it back a bit. If you do that, you know when it's too loud, bring it back a bit and then you find your sweet spot more easily. It could work, so this is a tip I want to give you. Within Evo Studio there are multiple ways to set the level. I will go over another way that's viable in any door, but first Evo Studio. There are three ways to set the volume within Evo Studio. It can be overwhelming. So let me walk you through the three options you have. When you double click on the stem you have a volume knob on the top here. This volume knob correlates to the volume knob on this side. The left is uh, pen, penning by the way, left right. It's this volume knob which is linked to this one. Next up there is a second volume knob. If you go to the wrench here, there is levels adjustment and a volume knob here. This really boosts the level by quite a lot, way more than this volume. You can bring it down and bring it up by the way. And then the third one is a fader. It's up to your preference which one you want to use, but I personally use a combination of this volume knob and this volume knob. If I need to make slight adjustments, I go into the volume knob here. If I need to make big adjustments, I do them here and then fine tune it with this one. The reason I wouldn't use the fader is because this fader is the main fader. If you want to make an adjustment, slight adjustment instead of adjusting your, your fine-tuned volume knob in relation to this one it could mess up your balance use this fader to make small adjustments later down the line not in your initial gain staging now for an another way in any door to set your levels this is through a plugin my preferred plugin is an ssl channel in this case an e channel i love the eq i love everything about it, it's my main EQ. And I set the gain with this small in knob. This knob, when you raise the volume, it's the volume that goes into the plugin. The big fader here is a post fader. This is what goes out of the plugin. It says here, out. I do this for all the channels with the SSL. You can see snare element, SSL, hi-hat element, all SSLs. Percussion, this one wasn't used, SSL, SSL, SSL. You can see I gain stage with the SSL in this project. One more important note, if you set the gain in the SSL, leave the EQ alone. This is for later stage in the mixing process. So far we've organized the project, we've gain staged the project, and now we have a rough balance, we have a rough idea, we're really cooking right now. I'd like to refer to a video made by Mixbus TV in which he does all these steps without talking, in which he organizes the project and sets the gain. 
it it's about six minutes long so you can see how quickly it is i usually do take about 10 minutes depending on how many stamps there are and if the client already labeled the stamps otherwise i'd be done in half the time so this is really a quick process you shouldn't take an hour for this because then you can really fine tune what you have you it doesn't need to be perfect in the first pass it needs to be good enough you need to have a rough balance the next part in this video i will go over the individual elements and what i did to them with eq with fine tuning the balance and with compression and some other things i must say this project was quite well balanced and very well produced so i didn't need to do a lot of heavy processing or heavy lifting it was really getting the character and the tone of the elements more more out there more popping i do have more projects in which i do some more crazy stuff like splitting the low band high band and multi-band compression and stuff to really make the elements shine i can go over that in another video if you want please leave a comment down below if you want to hear more in-depth more complex mixing stuff let's get into the mixing of the drums first then the instruments then the effects and then lastly the vocals okay drums kick first we've already listened to the kick if i remove the processing first completely it isn't a big difference but in the context of the mix it is a big difference let's let's listen into in context without you can hear the kick is shining through way 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 more what did i do first i pushed the kick in an API 2500 compressor. The gain reduction is not that much, but still quite substantial. I dialed in the threshold, attack quite fast. I wanted to really grab the, the initial transient because it was a bit wild and the release is quite slow because the, the, the low end following the initial transient was too much in my opinion. It, it was good, it, it sounded good, but if you translate it to different speakers, it would fall apart and just be rumble and too much low end. So I had to tame the tail a bit. And the reason I took the API 2500 compressor is because I could use the tone aspect of this compressor, which is amazing. Let's, let's listen to what it does. Normal. It's something about the medium setting in the tone and a thrust that just makes this kick so much better than any other setting and without the compressor at all. And then I set the knee. I don't want to smash it all the way. I, it's not needed in this case. And soft just didn't do enough. So for both Matt. I didn't play with stereo link because it's a kick. I wanted mono. So that's that. Next I set the gain. Uh, the reason I did this order is because the kick is the first element and I want the kick to be powerful before I even set the level. Um, another note to make is this mix was delivered quite low in volume so I could choose to boost everything to minus three and really have to redo the balance the client already did. I didn't want to do that, so I only gave it a slight boost, adjusted what the compressor uh, took out of it volume-wise. And now it's it's peaking at really, really low. Let's see, I, I was missing some bass, so I added the end at around 87 in a bell curve. If I take the bell curve off, it will be a low shelf. So everything from zero up till, what would I say? 87 is going to get boosted, which was again, too wild. This was a bit more focused. Though I was missing the, the sub and the low end, so I boosted it at 46 Hertz. With a max bass, this just introduces third harmonics if I'm correct um, and really pumps up your your kicks you have a max bass and you have R bass both from waves and they are 
amazing if there is lacking bass but be careful it can also mess up your sound big time if you can't properly hear the low end in your uh, listening environment over the next instrument the snare the character of this snare is quite slapping high frequencies galore it was already kind of too much but it fit the vibe I didn't want to touch it, I didn't want to bring it down, I didn't want to boost it, but what I did want to do is boost the body of this clip. You might say this clip doesn't really have body, but boosting it by just a little bit brought the elements in conjunction with the kick, brought a bit more thrust, bring driving the, the, the drums more. Clap. It's named clap wide because it's really wide and I like wide elements in a mix because you can make contrast. If you have a clear center and nothing on the sides, then it, it gets still. I didn't really need to boost any sides. I didn't do any mid-side EQing. Could have done. Here again, the boost at the lower frequencies at the body. This is more a percussive FX element. I, I added to the claps bus. I only set the gain because I, I, I liked what it was doing, it didn't need any processing. Again, just adjusted the volume, it sounded good. Next up, open hi-hat, or the hi-hat section, I must say. And this is what I meant, here you have the top loop. And you can hear a bit of top kick, you can hear a bit of snare, you can hear a bit of hi-hat. And it was important for this track to balance it out because it couldn't interfere with my other snares and other clips. Also, ju I just set the, the gain here. For the closed hi-hat, I like the tail of it. I like how it reverberated between the spaces of the kick and the snare. So I put a bit more emphasis on it with the high boost. Lastly, the main open head element, the top loop element. I didn't boost this one because I boosted the other ones. If I would boost this one, it would be getting overwhelming, but I did want to emphasize the hi-hats within the loop. Combining those, I think the drums have a really good groove right now and I'm happy. Let's move on to the instruments. Now for the instruments, it's important to remember the thing I said earlier about the three elements that people can listen to. Number one element for us is obviously the kick. Second will be the bass, I think, and in this case the plug as well. Let's listen to the instruments. There are two elements you can immediately hear are very important. Those are the plug and the bass. Combine that with the kick and you have the one, two, three main elements you want people to listen to. With that idea in mind, I started mixing the instruments. The stems delivered to me were quite good, but the idea the producer had just didn't come across. The thing I did mainly was boost the plug by quite a lot, seven and a half, and that magically fixed the vibe of the track it really shined suddenly i didn't e even need to eq so the production was good the balance was off and that's again how important balancing is going over compression for the plug the plug has a transient element to it that's why i took the puick child 670 the, the stereo version um my base for this one was the uh, rock guitar I th uh, rock strings I like for some reason I like them on uh, like this preset on synth parts it just gives a, a glue type it isn't a glue compressor but it gives that type of compression relatively fast uh, attack threshold dialed in rest is <laughs> I like the character that a Puick child gives to, to a signal, especially with this. Especially with this preset. Let's check it out with and without. Without. With. You can really hear the transient slap. 
Then I took another EQ after the compression because I didn't want to feed the compression with the EQ, so I took the EQ after the compression. That's a that was a mixing decision because the order of plugins is quite important. If you boost before the compression, the compression will react on that boost, EQ boost, and gives you a different result. But I wanted to boost the characteristics after I compressed it. You can see here quite a big boost at 1.3 without with just to emphasize the transient even more uh, lastly shaper box is for side chaining the original stems were side chain already but i like to make sure that nothing interferes with the base so everything is as i intended the full control over every aspect of the spectrum next important element the baseline you can feel it's pretty massive. Let's remove the plugins and see what we started with. Now this is this is getting to the more uh, heavy lifting uh, mixing wise. Also here a big, big, big balance boost, big volume boost, eight and a half dBs. Uh, I think this is the biggest boost I made in this project. Again, it came down to leveling that the elements weren't popping. Now they are. A small boost, really slight boost around the, the, the sub frequencies. I did the EQ before it went into compressor. This was a deliberate choice. And now here again, I use the API 2500, mainly for taming the the tail and the transient, but more importantly, the tone control. These ones, the knee and the thrust, again, love it. it makes a world of difference. Let's let's listen to it without. With. You can feel it driving more. It has a more aggressive tone, but still, it wasn't enough. I needed to bring out some of the elements, the, 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 the characteristics, the air, the, the, the vibe, if you will, with the EQ. If I turn off the EQ, you have a solid bass line, right? With the EQ on, I boosted the high end, which competes a little bit with the plug. But this was deliberate. This was in conjunction with the plug to make it make the transient even, even tighter. You can hear if I turn on the EQ, it, it, both frequencies get pushed up and to the front. That was the main goal. So these are the two most important elements. They are centered, they are massive, they are the main thing I want people to listen to. But we have a lot more instruments going on. I, I call these for this project filler and what I mean by filler is they aren't in the center, they aren't there to grab your attention, but they are there to fill in the stereo field. Let's see how I did that. It's called Melody Atmos, Atmosphere, and you can clearly hear why. Again, I did a volume, uh, the gain staging with the SSL. Next I took a stereo enhancing plugin. The blue dots show where in the stereo field the sound exactly is and you can see it's all over the stereo field from left to right. And the kick for example would be one line straight through the middle, that would be very center and this has barely any loud elements in the center, most are to the left and to the right. Next elements are, let's go back to the drop a bit. The vibraphone, this is a one shot used infrequently, not that much in this project, but when it hit, I wanted to really make sure that the, the, the vibe of the track was moving forward through this element. And this is how the, the, the producer has intended it as well, just to break up the, the monotonous uh, bass line. And uh, for example, uh, bouncing from left to right is with the Mondo mod, it's automatic panner, you can do it in many different ways. And to fatten up the sound, I gave it a bit of saturation, just a preset, maybe dial in a bit more high end. And the SSL again is for gain staging. Now back to one more very, very important element. Let's listen to it. 
this is massive biggest element in the entire instruments mix and it's he put it the, the producer put it under fx and when i heard it i was like no this is an instrument i need to treat this specifically like an instrument because this is huge and this is what really makes the drop powerful when it comes in let's listen to it again <laughs> You can immediately hear what I mean. There are two elements to this, and there's a riser, and there is the hit or the down riser. You can see the, the, the client uh, already sidechained it, and it's their decision. I would have sidechained it a bit less, a bit less aggressive, but that's, that's taste. Uh, the reason I split up the, the pre and the post, this, so the, the riser and the down riser, is because I wanted to make the riser that goes into the drop louder than the actual hit on the drop because on the drop there's the bass, there's the kick, there's so many elements that come together to boost the volume and then it just gets muddy. The thing I did for the reverse, set the levels, no EQ, and I saturated the signal to make it even more raw, more powerful. For the hit itself, giving it uh, also saturation a bit less than the other one, uh, because, like I said, every element there in the drop comes together. We don't need all that muddiness, just the clear, crisp character of this synth. That was actually it for the instruments, and you might say that was quite little processing. Yes, indeed true, but everything I do is for the purpose. If I twist a knob, I know the result I want to get. And I didn't need more, especially not now at this stage of the mixing process. And then next up, the FX. You might be surprised, but there is absolutely no processing on the FX. The only thing I did was set the level with the SSL and I left the knob on zero. So there's actually nothing going on on the FX. And this is really simple to explain. All my energy went into mixing the drums in the instruments and then the FX is just filler, it's just small things. And the most important FX elements, I took them put them in instruments, gave them an individual treatment, and the rest of the FX is just the FX. If the volume level is good, it's good. I barely touch the FX at all, unless it really needs to. And lastly, going over the vocals, this track has vocals, although I didn't do the vocal mix. This was done by the producer and someone else. I can't show you what the autotune did, what the FX are. I, I didn't do it, so I won't go over it in this one. But if you want to see uh, how to mix vocals, how to prepare them for the master, leave a comment down below, subscribe, and I will make a video on that one. This is where my mixing video stops. Everything I do on the master is part of the mastering stage. There is a separate video coming up on this exact master chain on what I did, why I did it, and how you can combine your mixing stage with the mastering stage thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something i had fun making this and i would love to hear what you think down in the comments and i'd like to see you back on the next video on the mastering stage of this project thank you very much and see you next time bye bye